even in prison, we may pray, praise and proclaim. That's the message I want to share with you as part of this lockdown logos vlog. I hope you like the snazzy title and intro uh, that we've introduced. Um, over the next few weeks, we're going to have some different people sharing their voices and words of encouragement. Logos, uh, a logos, a word in season during this time of lockdown. And uh, I'd like to do that today um, from a story in the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 25 and following. Uh, it's a lovely, incredible story. Uh, Paul and Silas, just to set the scene, have been uh, have gone to Philippi and they've been arrested and flogged and thrown into jail for their uh, the ministry and deliverance um, of this servant girl. And anyway, they've ended up in this prison. And we read in verse 25 of that chapter, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw that the prison doors were wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted out in a loud voice, do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights and rushing in, fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. Amazing story. And the jailer goes on. The jailer gives them some food and washes their wounds and they wash him and his family through baptism. And uh, the next day, the police send the message that they're free to go. And it's a happy ending for, um, for all concerned. And uh, it's amazing, isn't it? And, and I want to share with you that even in prison, we may pray, praise and proclaim. That's the message today. You might feel that you are imprisoned, that your horizons have been truncated, that you are under house arrest, as it were, during this time of coronavirus lockdown. But the good news is that we don't have to acquiesce and slump and assume that we can't share our faith or be proactive in our spirituality at this time, because the witness of Paul and Silas is that far from it. God can use these circumstances in unusual ways and provide opportunities that wouldn't have been uh, possible in other circumstances. So make the most of them. I love that Paul and Silas, firstly, are engaging in prayer and praise, that it's midnight. And even in the small hours, they are digging into God. They are praying and praising and, and uh, thanking him. And isn't it amazing that we can we can thank and praise God? It's countercultural. But in the midst of suffering, um, they're bleeding from wounds. They're still able to praise God. It gives them an unusual, peculiar witness to the prisoners around them. And uh, it's not going to surprise you to say, I think during this time of lockdown, we should take the opportunity to praise more and to pray more. And we should do that personally, but we should also do that corporately. Um, I'd love for us to do uh, another 24 seven uh, week of prayer later in the term. We'll have to do it virtually. Uh, we can't make a prayer space, but maybe you can make one in your home. Set aside a room, a closet, a shed, a cupboard, <laughs> um, put a blanket over your head, put up some fairy lights, but make a holy space, a set aside space in your home to pray during this time. The world needs the prayers of God's people at this time desperately, not just for physical deliverance from a virus, but for, for spiritual deliverance as well. And we, when we pray, when we praise, we trust that God will move and God will send an earthquake to shake up our circumstances, to bring deliverance and salvation. So let's pray and praise and let's proclaim. Even in our praising and our praying, we will begin to proclaim. People will want to be part of that. I've, I've read that uh, um, uh, the Google searches for the word prayer have gone up, have skyrocketed during this time of, of coronavirus, doubling for every 80,000 new cases of coronavirus. And so people are turning to prayer, perhaps for the first time, in their desperation. They've got spiritual questions they're seeking and they'll be listening in to what the Christians are doing during this time. So let's uh, let's begin to share with them uh, and show how one can approach God in prayer and in praise and take opportunities that come for proclamation. I had a, a, an amazing a kind of uh, conversation yesterday with one of our church members who shared with me this story of how on their um, daily exercise, they'd on consecutive days come came across the same person. 
and uh, they got to know this person better, obviously talking with them at a safe distance. Uh, and they'd even been able to share a Bible with them, give them a Bible. And um, on a subsequent days, it turned out this person had been reading the Bible. And uh, isn't that amazing to be able to share your faith with somebody during this time? And it may be that as you're out and about, you get opportunities to talk at a deeper level with people and share the word of the Lord, as Paul and Silas did with this uh, Philippian jailer. So let's be alive to those opportunities um, this coming week and in the days to come. Uh, I'd love for us later this term, as well as doing a 24-7, to also um, to put on an exploring Christianity course or something that people can uh, share with their friends and, and do online. Uh, and we'll find a way of doing that. If you want to be part of that team or the 24-7 prayer team, be in touch. Um, let's uh, be proactive during this time. Paul says this in his letter from prison to the Christians in uh, Colossae. He says, chapter four, verse two, devote yourselves to prayer keeping alert in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray for us as well, that God will open to us a door for the word. You know, it's not just saying, it's not saying pray, open the prison doors. He's saying open for us a, a door for the word that we may declare or proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in prison so that I may reveal it clearly as I should. Conduct yourself wisely towards outsiders, making the most of the time or the opportunity let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer everyone. So that's our advice from Paul and Silas during this time of imprisonment. Let's remember that even in prison, we may pray, praise and proclaim.